us love chocolate. Chocolate? In fact, there's only one thing I love more than chocolate. God. Yes, God. He made the plants, the animals, the sky, the lands, and everything that comes from them. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Chocolate. Sweet chocolate. I was talking about the world God made. Chocolate world? Maybe you need to cut back there a bit. No. No, no, no. So kids, the next time you take a bite into a sweet piece of chocolate. Chocolate. Remember who made that chocolate. God made chocolate. And thank you for giving us such a sweet life in his creation. And chocolate. Thank you for chocolate. <laughs> Come on, Macy, let's go get you a burger. Chocolate burger. Oh, brother. <laughs> Can y'all guess what our lesson's about this morning? <laughs> chocolate, chocolate. Oh, they did a great job on that. Thank you, girls. So what is your absolute most favorite candy ever? Chocolate, chocolate. If you answer chocolate, you are not alone. Almost everyone loves chocolate, right? Chocolate is sweet. And we have a special treat for you this morning. Kids, would you like to pass out everyone some chocolate here? Yay, yay. <laughs> yeah. But let me tell you, this is the only time you're going to get to reach in the offering plate and take something out, okay? So as it comes by, y'all can come and get you a piece of chocolate, okay? All right. So chocolate can be paired with anything from peanuts to coconuts to cherries. Chocolate can be bite-sized, bar-sized. You can melt it. You can serve it hot, cold, baked, chilled, you name it. People have done it with chocolate. I've seen chocolate-covered bacon. And you know what? It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Chocolate is a sweet reminder, though, of the good things God has given us. You know, we can turn everything back to God, can't we? So God created the ingredients, like Gracie said, the cocoa bean. He created the ingredients that go into making chocolate candy. Mm -hmm. He also made animals, flowers, birds, fish, and trees. He made beaches. Oceans, praise the Lord, I love the ocean. And rivers, God gave us everything on this earth for our enjoyment, didn't he, kids? Yes, yes. He made them not only to give us pleasure, but also it's a reminder about what a loving and creative God he is. Now, sometimes life gets hard, doesn't it? It sure does. Sometimes you have a bad day, and it seems like the only solution is a little bit of chocolate. Yeah. Guilty. Next time you reach for a sweet treat to brighten your day, take a moment to thank God for chocolate. Thank him for the world we live in. And the life that he gave you. Because God made all things for good for those who love him, right? So enjoy it and never forget where it came from. Y'all thought that was the lesson, didn't you? Has not. I've got a little game, and I need a volunteer. Now, each time in children's ministry, we take a minute, like a minute to win it game that we do, and we're going to do that this morning, and I need a volunteer. Anyone? Pastor Ralph, thank you. Come on up here. <laughs> or I'll hold it for you if you trust me. Okay, would someone like to get me a timer going for 60 seconds? Yeah, 60 seconds. What I have here is a Hershey bar that's been broken up. So Pastor Ralph has exactly 60 minutes. 60 seconds, sorry, 60 minutes, wow. 60 seconds to put 
this bar back together into the wrapper, and if he does, he wins a sweet treat. Now, I know something about the pastor. I know what his favorite treat is. <laughs> what kind of chocolate? Reese's. So if he does it in 60 seconds or less, he gets his Reese's. So who's timing for me? Does somebody have the timer on? Tristan, you got it? Okay. You tell him when to go. You ready? You set? Go. Should we cheer him on, kids? Go, Pastor. Go, 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 Pastor. Go, go. Go, go, go. Say, go, Pastor Ralph. Go, Pastor Ralph. Go, Pastor Ralph. Ralph. (laughs) I didn't see that. Is he cheating? (laughs) How much time left, Tristan? 30 seconds, Pastor. Looking for, well, it's not quite originally how it started, but it's in the package. What do you think, kids? <laughs> Should we let pastor have this? Yes. Do you, do you love your pastor? Okay, pastor. <laughs> was kind of fun, wasn't it? But, you know, as much fun as we have back there in children's ministry, we do get into the Word. And so we're going to get into the Word right now. We're going to be in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 12. Kiddos, can y'all, is Luke in the Old or New Testament? New, very good. Okay, I have a glass of water right there in front of me. Can y'all see that, kids? Can y'all see that good? Okay. And this pertains to adults as well. Um, I tell you what, I've learned a lot back there in the lessons with children's ministry, and I've learned that sometimes you've got to break it down to the simple things. And um, I have just learned so much. So I think there's something here for all of us this morning. So are you a glass half full or a glass half empty kind of person? I know adults have heard that, but my children, youth, have y'all heard that expression? Are you a half full or half empty kind of person? Is it talking about the water? No, 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 no. It's talking about how you see the world, okay? Are you a positive person who looks at this glass and say, wow, that glass is half full? Are you a negative person who looks at it and says, that's not a full glass, that's half empty. You see, there's a difference as to how you view the world. And in this world today, it's getting harder and harder to be that glass half full kind of person, isn't it? It really is. Think about the last time you had a bad day. Kids, maybe you were late to school. Maybe you had... A bad grade? Maybe you had to spend your Saturday doing chores. Blah. (laughs) Adults? Maybe you you had a morning where everything was going wrong, your car's on empty, you forgot to fill it up, you're late to work, or you were just diagnosed with an illness, or you received some kind of bad news. Sometimes that happens. And how did you respond to your bad day? Sometimes when we're having a hard time, we throw a fit, don't we? Do you ever throw a fit when you're having a bad day? Do you say things you shouldn't say? Maybe. Do something we shouldn't? Adults, do we ever do that? Do we ever throw fits as an adult? Do we ever say something we shouldn't say? See, kids, adults have these same problems. Sometimes... We blow off some steam, don't we? Like to go out, maybe shoot some hoops. Teenagers, y'all like going out and shoot some hoops? Or maybe take your bike. I like to get on the treadmill and start running. 
to get my stress off. But, um, but let's be honest, what do you really want? A piece of chocolate, right? <laughs> a piece of chocolate, and that will make it all better. I mean, seriously, is there any day so bad or so horrible, kiddos, that can't be made better with chocolate? <laughs> chocolate has the power to put a smile on your face, no matter how bad your day is. And this reminds me, while I was studying for this, this reminds me of um, a movie that Josh and I, Josh got this for Christmas. It's called Band of Brothers. I don't know if any one of you are familiar with that. It's a World War II uh, movie, and uh, we were watching that, and during, there is a, several scenes, actually, where the soldiers, I mean, think of what they're in the middle of there, all that fighting and everything, and one of their most treasured possessions was a chocolate bar. They, were, they would fight over the chocolate bars. True story. This was based on true stories. Um, and that's what popped into mind. They were seeing some pretty bad stuff. There's one scene there out in the middle of winter. Snow. They're freezing. They had just been in a combat situation. One guy saw two of his friends killed. He's sitting there. And the guy right beside him, what does he pull out for him? A chocolate bar. Okay? Doesn't make the pain go away, but it's that momentary pleasure, isn't it? So chocolate can also be a reminder that we have a God who truly loves us. God made the plants that allow us to make chocolate from those plants. That wasn't an accident, do you think? No. God made chocolate and everything in this world for our enjoyment. So yes, you know, it's okay to thank God for chocolate, <laughs> like Macy was doing. I have thanked God for chocolate on many, many occasions. Um, but some days we need a reminder that God created this world and all things in it for our good. In today's scripture, in Luke chapter 12, Jesus encourages us to look at the things God created for our pleasure and be reminded of just how good he is. So we're going to start down in verse 22. It's a short passage, but it's very, very good. So Luke 12, verse 22. And he said to his disciples, for this reason I say to you, do not worry about your life as to what you will eat, nor your body as to what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens. Kids, that's a bird. Okay? Consider the ravens. For they don't sow or reap. That means they don't go out and plant their food. They don't go out and work for their food, do they? They just go get it, right? Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap. They don't have a storeroom or a barn. And yet God feeds them. Right? How much more valuable are you than birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? If then you cannot do even a very little thing, why do you worry about other matters? Consider the lilies, flowers. Have you seen the flowers? Think of a beautiful flower. Consider, consider the lilies, how they grow. They don't toil nor spin. That means they're not working, are they? But I tell you, not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass in the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace... How much more will he clothe you, you men of little faith? And don't seek what you will eat and what you will drink, and do not keep worrying. For all these things the nations of the world eagerly seek, but your father, who's your father, kids? God, Jesus, God. But your father knows that you need these things. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Now, many people refer to this passage as a reminder not to worry, and that's true. But there's more to Jesus' story here about the flowers and the birds than not worrying. Jesus wants to remember who created us. Who created us, kids? God, that's right. 
The same God who made the flowers, who provides for them, and who makes them beautiful even, is the same God who made us. He created these things for our pleasure, and he tends to them without their needing to worry. Do you think the flowers and birds and everything out there worry? About, oh, is it going to rain today? No, they don't worry about it. We should not worry about that either, should we? Because if God takes care of the flowers, how much more is he going to take care of us, right? These created things are secondary to God's creation of mankind. Just like we said, as Jesus says, how much more will God provide for us? God doesn't just meet our basic needs, does he? He gives us flowers and birds, and yes, he gives us chocolate so we can enjoy this life. All of these created things were made for our joy, and they all remind us what a great and loving God we have. Sometimes we're going to have bad days, aren't we? We live in a fallen world, and sin has brought all sorts of bad things into this world. We will suffer heartbreak. We will witness tragedy. We will experience loss. The question is, isn't if we've had a bad day, but when. It's like Pastor says, you're either going into a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. And um, the next question is, how are you going to respond to it? Now, chocolate isn't the answer, is it? No, it's sweet, but it's not the answer. Like flowers and birds, it's just a created thing, right? It's not the creator. But chocolate can help us remember who our creator is. Who is our creator? God. Our creator made the beautiful world in which we live. He gave us sunny days, flowers, pets, birds, and all the good things we see in nature. But he gave us something dear. He gave us his son. Who is his son? Who is God's son, kiddos? Jesus. Jesus. He sent Jesus for us, didn't he? He sent Jesus to pay the price for our sins so we can have that relationship with him. And one day, he will give those who love him eternal life. And the glass right here, it's never half empty when you know Jesus, is it? Nope. In fact, this glass, if I had more water, I could feel it to overflowing, couldn't I? Now, when you have a bad day, just take a moment to pause and reflect on who created you. Remember who clothed the flowers and remember who feeds the birds. And when you bite into a piece of chocolate that makes even the worst of days brighter, remember the God who gave us chocolate, who really is good. Now, I want before I ask Mr. Bart to come in here to really drive this lesson home, I've got two little girls who want to come up and pray for us. Come on, Cheyenne. And Caleb, perfect timing, baby. Cheyenne and Kaylin, can you all come up here and pray for us? These girls, whenever I ask for volunteers to pray, they are always jumping up and down to do it, and they are incredibly sweet. And before Kaylin prays, I already told her she can't pray her prayer she prays on Sunday in Sunday school. Because she always prays, thank you, God, for Miss Melinda not being late. <laughs> so <laughs> every Sunday I said, don't say that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let Miss Kaylin start and Miss Cheyenne finish. And when we're done, Mr. Bart, you can come up and close us out, please. You ready? Thank you, God, for letting us all be here today. Thank you for letting Pastor Ralph be uh, um, here. Amen. God, um, we th I thank you for this day. Uh, if uh, if anybody's sick, can you please help them? Uh, I love you, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, honey. Brent, Casey, and Dana.
it's fun being in children's ministry because you get to play a lot of games. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> we're going to use this to represent sin. And this sin, it's, uh, well, it's really nasty. So if y'all hold out y'all's hand. Well, I'm glad I ain't got a lot of sin coming to me. Y'all squeeze your hands around a little bit. Ain't that fun? It's fun to water any sin, ain't it? It's just messy and nasty. But pretty soon you want to get it off, don't you? You're tired of it. It gets yucky, ain't it? Well, that's what happens when you start having a life in the way it was sin. It just grows. Look at all that mess you got. That sin makes a mess of your life. And it's so hard and, and, and it's so easy in life to hide your sin and not deal with it. When you don't deal with it, it just keeps on. Let me get y'all something to clean that up. Just don't touch me. <laughs> I'm glad I ain't y'all. But just like, uh, just like your sin, there's hope and there's promise, and that's in Jesus. You know, Jesus died for our sins, and, and when you accept him, he'll clean you up. But a lot of times we don't let him just clean us all the way up because we still hide that sin in our heart, and we turn back to it. And that sin, it doesn't just affect us, it affects other people. And so <clears throat> one thing we have to realize is that... Uh, when we ask Jesus to come to our heart, there's a process, and there's a growth process. If we don't stay in the Word, and we don't stay true to God, and we don't try to grow with Christ, that sin that we hide in our heart and that sin that sticks to us is just going to come back and remind us. It might, we might even fall into it. You know, um, you know, we teach the kids about Solomon. Solomon, he, uh, he's pretty wise, and uh, he was a leader. Sin crept in his life and in his heart. And he didn't stay obedient. And he was defeated. Well, you know, uh, Solomon had a lot of wives, and that was his downfall. But, you know, I look at it, he wasn't obedient. What you doing? You know, if he was obedient and, and he loved the Lord, um, you know, and he stayed true to him, you know, his life might have been different. And, and, and oftentimes, you know, we need to remember that. We, we, uh, we like great things. We come to church. We want to see great uh, speakers. We want to see a show. We want to see these kids doing something. We want people to get uh, just fired up. When they get fired up about the Word, that's what we teach some kids on Wednesdays and on Sundays. We, uh, we want them to learn the Word and have the Word in their heart. And we want them to be little warriors. Because we can come in here and we can talk about our future and we can talk about things of the world. But it lies in those children right there. And every one of them babies. You know, and, and we talk about raising them up in the ways of the Lord. Well, that comes along with parents too. You know, we we don't need to be sowers. We need to be fertilizers. You parents out there need to be the ones who are sowing. We need to be the ones that are fertilizing. <clears throat> That's hard to say because a lot of times in life we have our busy life and we don't got time. We keep on grappling about the world. You know, Melinda asked me back last year what I get from uh, working with these children. I feel like every one of them belong to me. I get absolute fear. Not just joy and contentment and seeing them grow, seeing them get saved, seeing them know the answers to the Bible, but fear that at any time we can miss the mark, any time we can miss an opportunity to, to disciple them or share with them or be with them. You know, they, they, uh, they, they got eyes and they got ears that hear. They sit right there in these seats and they hear the conversations of us men and women. They hear our complaints, our gripes. They hear, uh, they hear things that uh, we think ought to be and what ain't. And just as those kids, those youth, they might get tired. They don't want to be involved in church. They don't want to be tied up in what we think it ought to be. You know, uh, it's a real blessing to be involved. But it's more of a blessing to have to see the childlike faith that them kids got, the innocence. And, and, and just knowing that God loves them, and that's as simple as it is. You know, he said he had a whole world in his hand because Jesus loved me. That's how simple it is. 
you know, just to know that, that Jesus loves us and just to know that that sin can be, be washed off just by believing and accepting in him, knowing that he was raised three days, you know, uh, being convicted and wanting to change. And uh, that's what we want them kids to know. It's not just a, it's just not a, a choice of convenience. It's not just a choice of uh, being scared. It's a change. It's a heart-driven change, and uh, it's, it's knowing conviction, and it's having repentance of your life, knowing the goodness and greatness of God. Every one of them know that they have a plan. We don't know what they're playing. Right over there could be the greatest pastor, preacher in the world. But if somebody ain't talking to them, just slap a little, sharing the love of God, showing them how fun it is to be in church, and, and uh, showing them that, you know, past traditions don't matter. They may not grow. So every one of us have a job. Parents, you got a job. And, and, and you know, a lot of us are not convinced or convicted of working children's ministry. We think we love missions. That's where your missions start right there. Discipling the kids, people sitting in here, reading the word, having it in your heart. So children, it, it, it's, it's fun to work with them. And I ask that if anybody wants to do or, or be involved, pray about it. You know, seek your heart out. Because it's a blessing to be with them. It really is. And if you don't know the Lord, and just like these nasty people up here that had chocolate all over them, I mean, you can get clean, and, and it's better than a baby wipe. I assure you that. But, um, you know, I, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to ask Pastor Ralph to come up here and, uh, and close us. So, so if y'all bow your head and bow your hearts, and, and let's just ask God. <clears throat> Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity just to have this morning, just for everybody to see these kids, Lord, and, and just to see their excitement, Lord. Lord, it's just so joyful to see the true faith of a child that just this, this is innocent and, and all they want is to be loved and, and, and know how much you love how much you love them and how great you are. Lord, I pray for every heart in this uh in this service, Lord, that uh that if they're dealing with something, if they're sick or if um if there's something convicting them, Lord I just uh I just pray you just seek them and, and uh they come to know you or, or just have a relief and and um Lord, all their burdens and, and worries are just are took care of, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We we love you. We uh we praise you. Just forgive us and just be with us. Uh, be us. Be with. Help us be a people that uh, that just want to seek you and and um, just disciple and just fall in love with you, Lord. Just be excited. Have a good time with you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for all things. Amen. Every head bowed and every eye closed. And just, uh, just say with me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for chocolate. Okay, we're done. Now, listen, so I'm sitting here watching these children today, and I'm just absolutely blessed. I mean, are you kidding me? This was a good worship service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next week, you may all want to go to Children's Church to hear Melinda. That was pretty doggone good. But I, I was sitting here listening to them, and, and I'm not going to take the, just a minute, but I'm sitting here listening. I'm watching the children this morning, the singing, their praying, the Bible story, the message, everything. And I'm listening to it. Now, here's my thought, okay? So uh, my thought is last Sunday night, this church spent an hour discussing and talking back and forth whether or not we should renovate a vestibule. And our children taught us this morning it's just about worshiping him. In fact, I think our children taught us this morning that what we often do is foolishness. There's the simplicity of worship. And it's not what all we adults make it out to be it's just loving Jesus because Jesus loves us
And it really is that simple. We want to make it a whole lot harder than what it is. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. And he talks about that childlike faith. What is childlike faith? Childlike faith is just trusting Jesus. There's nothing hard about it. It's just trusting the Lord to do what the Lord said he would do. The Bible says, for all have sinned, the end of the lesson, with the chocolate on their hands, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all come short. Every single person sitting in here today has come short of the glory of God. None are righteous, not even one. Every one of us sitting here this morning need Jesus Christ. There's not a one of us here that's going to get into heaven without him. You, you need to understand that. You will not go to heaven if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You will spend eternity separated from God in a place called hell if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But then the Bible also teaches us as believers that we sin. And let's, let's don't think about the big sins. I mean, we're sitting here this morning as believers, and most of us, we're, we're past the big sins. I mean, most of us are. The, the fornication, the adultery, the drunkenness, the drugs, most of us sitting here are past all of that. But what about those other little sins we don't pay that much attention to, like our attitudes, our feelings and our emotions, our judgment, our anger, our malice, our gossip. I just watched these children this morning. The simplicity and the purity of their worship. How sweet is that? And folks, I mean, that, you may be intellectual, and that's just too simple for you, but that's exactly where God wants us. I, I get it. I, the study of the Word, the preaching of the Word, the teaching of the Word, I get going deep. I get, I, I, get, I get all of that. But sometimes the Lord just wants you to stop and just love him and worship him like a child, like a child. And most of us folks sitting here today as grown-up believers, it's been a long time since you just love Jesus like a child loves Jesus, since you just trusted Jesus like a child trusts Jesus. What was it Melinda said a while ago about the rain? What did you say, Melinda? Where are you at? You said something about the rain when you were doing your message. Yeah, you know, the flowers don't worry about the rain. And Tammy and I just prayed this morning, Lord, don't let it rain. We're trying to finish our house. <laughs> I mean, not an hour ago. When we were praying, and, I'm, and, and I looked at Tammy and I said, word. <laughs> we're praying over whether or not it'll stop raining on our property so we can finish our house. And God's just saying, why don't you just shut up and enjoy the rain? Why don't we all just slow down a little bit? Throw all this stuff down. Enjoy Jesus like a child. Every head bowed and every eye closed. This morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I plead with you, I beg you, I beseech you to get out of your seat once and for all and walk up here and say, Pastor, I want Jesus. Or you don't even have to come up here. You can, you can stand right there where you're at and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm not worthy of anything you have. But if you would, would you please save me? Stop running. Come to Jesus today with a childlike faith. You're sitting here today and you're a believer. Slow down. Quit getting so worried and 
full of anxiety and concerned about everything else and just enjoy the day that God gave you. Stop it. Just enjoy what God's put in your life. Chocolate. Father, lead us, guide us, direct us in this invitation. Have your way in every heart and every life. God, I pray there wouldn't one soul walk out of here today that doesn't know you as their Savior. And I pray that every soul that does know is your Savior, that today you would remind us above everything else that you want from us, even us grown-ups, us adults who know everything, remind us that all you're asking for is a childlike faith that will just trust you and enjoy you day by day in Jesus' name. Will you stand?